Money makes the world go round, the world go round. Money makes the world go round, round and round and round. Get my coffee, cause we all know Scruffy likes a coffee. Make my stirry worry worry. Make a mess before Winky kills us. Hello boys and girls. Well, it's Saturday. Got my coffee. Because we all know Scruffy likes a coffee. So let's have a chat. What we'll do, we'll go in the study and I'm going to do a bit of a maths lesson for you today. Oh no, not a maths lesson, Scruff. What do I want a maths lesson for? Because I want to show you how the maths behind trading works. And if you can master it, you'll be profitable. Matron, take them away. Okay guys, warm welcome to one and all. For those of you who don't know me from the intro, I am Big Scruff and I, I trade for a living. I try and put trading in the real world. Maybe show you a trick or two along the way. So if that sounds good and you're interested in the Forex market or indices, whatever you float you bought, do click that little subscribe button, genuinely helps. And then motivate me by smashing the like. Can't be any fairer than that. So I'm discussing position size and maths. And I know a lot of you will go, oh, just show me a strategy. I'll be all right with a strategy. Oh, make it stop. No, you won't. In fact, the strategy is the least of your troubles. You have to start with common sense. Who'd be stupid enough to do that? Justify, stupid. And sadly, there's not a lot of that about. And I see that when I see some of the adverts and the claims that people make. Um, some of them are just ludicrous when you see the likes of this. You ding dong! Give it to me again. You ding dong! <sighs> no good. No good. Because it's pipe dream. Anybody who has run or been in business understands it takes money to make money. Now I'm looking for two, three hundred quid a day. All right. Now, my risk factor, which is what everybody bangs on about, oh, how much are you risking? What are you doing? I'm not going to tell you how big my account is because a certain thing should be private, but let's just say it's a decent size. I can let a trade run two to three thousand pounds against me, and it won't hurt the account that much. It'll hurt me because of the size of the figures, but it won't hurt the account. Will I let it run that far? Of course I won't. But that's the parameter. So it's actually a math equation. Now, most people, when they are very new to Forex and trading, have a very small account. But they see these big figures and they look for the leverage inside an account. Well, that's your first mistake. In fact, it's the biggest mistake you will make. And it's the reason you weren't getting any further forward. Because what happens is, um, you'll see somebody putting on £10 a point or, or a lot if we, we're looking at lot. And if we, I'll, I'll call them lots, okay? But basically, um, the maths is this. One lot is equal to roughly £10 or $10, depending on where you are in the world. Half a lot is 0 0.5. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put it on the whiteboard just so that you can visualise it. That might make life easier. Well, we're waiting. Okay, guys. So just to put this into perspective, it's to sort of position sizes in lots. I want to turn it into money. So when I'm speaking, it might make sense because some people get a bit confused. And I'll show, show you that in just a second. When you're looking at one lot, one lot, okay, that is the equivalent to roughly £10 or $10, all right? Now, I live in the UK, so we're just going to say it's £10, okay? So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would equal 
five pounds. Okay, see the maths. Not point not five would equal fifty pence. And if you want to take it to the smallest denomination, it's not point not one equals ten p. Now each one of these figures is one price movement okay or one pip tick point whatever you want to call it that's what it is but it's normally worked on a pip all right so one increment will equal so just to recap one lot if it moves one increment one pip you'll make 10 pounds but you'll also lose a £10 if it goes the other way. If your account can't take a big amount of money, why the hell are you trading with one lot? You can't. I'm going to explain this when I go back on the camera. Deal in money, guys. And I can't stress that enough. Money will make it real. Percentage will make it just a fallacy. You know, oh, I only risk 2% of my account. Okay, what does that mean in real terms? Most people don't know. Oh, I only risk 1%. Right? What does that mean in real terms? You don't actually know. If you say you're putting 100 pound on the table, now it's real. Now it's meaningful. And you can relate to 100 pounds. You can't relate to a percentage. But the other side of it as well, they always say I'm risking. Well, you've already lost. And why? Because you're willing to risk it. You should risk nothing. Are you serious? You invest to make money. And this is something I'm going to touch on as well, because the way this industry is sold is just full of recycled garbage by people that see an idea. And I get it because I see people copying me and my terminology is kind of unique to me. Why? Because I invented it. I didn't come from the same background you lot did. I came from a business background and trading was my job and we were in house when we did it. So a lot of my terminology is now out all over YouTube because I have done this for years and you see me trade day in, day out, every day in the moment. Point of difference. I never use a rollback chart. That's another red flag. You know, oh, I took this trade. I got in here and I got out here and I made a gazillion and I only risked 1%, right? It's dead easy if I know what the outcome is. Not so easy when you do it in the moment. Because I have balls and you don't. And every one of my squad should be able to tell you, I'll tell them what I'm doing before I press the button. And then when you lot see me training in the moment, they already knew what I was doing. I think that's fair. Let me jump back on the screen. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, guys. Um, so what's all this got to do with Coffee with Scruff? Well, I'm going to give a little salute out to Malcolm, one of the newer members of the squad. And sometimes you kind of forget that somebody can be a little bit confused by lots, price, ticks, points, whatever. And it's kind of why I was touching on the terminology that I use, because it is a bit unique to me. Uh, I often say ticks, but ultimately it's just a price movement from zero to one. That's a tenner. Is it one to two? That's another tenner and so forth. And that's what we do. So in here, um, yes, I uh, went to weather spools this morning before I went to see the old fella. Um, but I just want to highlight something. Uh, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Is it? Is it in this one? Where, where are we are might be in here ah maybe not oh but if, if you want some scruffy merchandise this is joanne's little business you'll see the merch shelf underneath here or a link to it cheap as chips and pretty much free delivery everywhere um no i thought it was in here uh rogue request is it in rags and riches because we were having a good look in there the guys are doing really well at the moment uh okay Ah, there we go. Malcolm, Mal. Little salute to you, my friend. Trying to explain um, drawdown, 
lot size, etc. Okay. So that's kind of where this has come from, because what, what we do is I, I try to address things that I talk about during the week. And if you are watching this, there is a live stream on a Sunday night. Drop your comments and questions below and I'll bring it up in the live stream. I'll come along and ask me and I'll clarify Forex world, but in the real world, not the land of bloody la la. So what am I driving at? Okay, if you know what the money of the account is, then you can apply yourself correctly. So for argument's sake, if you've got a small account, you have no option but to put a decent amount of investment on the table. Because if you've got 100 quid and they're saying, oh, well, you can only do sort of 2% of your account. Well, that's two quid, right? It's not going to do anything. The spread's going to eat it in a heartbeat. Even if you're on 10p a point, you know, it don't take long for two quid to get hit. It really doesn't. You need to let the trade breathe. And that's where I'm gonna put some maths in the equation for you. And then you can see the difference between going 100% to market and staging into a market, you know? And the one element between the two is, one has process, the other one chases money. If you're chasing money, it's never going to work. So give up. And I say it all the time. And I get a lot of hate for this. And maybe I shouldn't say it. Maybe I should be like the, the idiot that I showed you earlier on. Or this tit. You ding dong! You know. I can't do it, guys. And I'll tell you for why. And if it means I only have, have one subscriber. But I change that subscriber's sort of mindset for the good then i think i've done a good job you know would i like to see this channel grow of course i would i love doing it as a hobby and that's another key word youtube to me is a hobby right i enjoy making the videos and i enjoy talking about something that i'm very passionate about which is the forex trading world i'm very good at it and i know it's easy to say that but i prove it day in day out um, i'm going to be a guest speaker it's one of the biggest Forex Expos in the world. Why? Because the people that are organizing, they've seen my track record, they know what my statements are, and they've seen me come through the ranks. And I'm very privileged to be part of it. It's Good job. And it's gonna be this. In fact, I'll, I'll show you what it is. Give me a second. Um, where are we at? Traders Day Live, okay. In fact, I'll show you my Traders Sync as well if you want. And then you can see that I do put my money where my mouth is. This is Traders Day Live on June the 17th this year. Okay. And it's a place where it is genuinely going to be best of the best. Now, there's a different agenda for each one. There's going to be different rooms. Um, and you'll recognize some of the names that are speaking here. That's me showing you how to grow a small account. And why? because I will consider myself pretty good at doing it. And those small accounts, as I'm saying, if I pull up my trader sync and then I'll drop in some statements as well. I'm currently, since the 1st of January, running 21,000. I've got a 54 profit factor, which is outstanding. And I've got a win rate of 95.7. Now it looks fabulous and to a degree, it is. I mean, if I, know, if I just drop in, sort of say my wage portfolio so that you can kind of see it. The wage one is even better, but let's have a look at the performance on a calendar. Uh, da, 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 da. That's March, 1300. We did 11, four, just shy of 11, four in February. And then you go down into January where I did you shy of eight grand. And if you remember in January, for those who was watching, I was on holiday and ill for a week in January. So I'm doing phenomenally well. I'm really pleased with how I'm doing, how I'm performing. And can't get any fairer than that. I genuinely can't get any fairer than that. So what else can we say? Well, I do a lot of prop. 
as you see, um, that's one of the reasons why I'm invited to, to that event. Um, I'm on doing prop again now, and it's a tiny wee account. Tiny, tiny wee account. In fact, I took the hardest challenge they've got just to show you, and I'm going to do it little steps every day. It's only $6 a day. Why? Because it's in relation to the size of the account, and that's what I'm driving. So what's the maths behind it? <laughs> now you're going to boggle your brain because I get asked this one all the time. Well, you stage your, your trades. It's stupid. Okay. Well, if it's stupid, how come I've done this as a full-time job for a very long time? Um, recognized by my peers as being pretty darn good at this. And yet I'm pulled apart by people who don't make money. Let you work that one out. And what they pull apart is something they don't understand. It's because they think that as soon as you press the button, you should make money. But to work like that. How many times does the market go against you? Well, for me, and as we've just established, I'd like to think I'm reasonably good at what I do. It always goes against me. Always. Um, so if that's the case, and we know it's always going to go against us, is it not common sense to capitalize on that? Say, I would say, yeah, it is. Now, I'm going to flip over onto sort of a tool that I use to kind of illustrate this. Now, yesterday, if you haven't seen this before, it's, my, it's a strength sheet I make up every day because I analyze the market on a morning. I input what I need into it, an engine, and it throws out these figures and it'll tell me which is good and bad and if you look at yesterday's figures you'll see it nailed it on the head um, and it does it day in day out but that's only part of the process you can do this many ways you can do it by just trading a single asset one I don't I trade multiple assets so I need a filter and that's what this is but I also live in this this is madness or what is nicknamed madness by the group. Because when people first see it, they genuinely don't understand it. And they don't understand why I say risk rewards are a waste of time. It is. Sets you up for a fall because you'll force a trade. When you talk about risk, I dismiss that because I come from a business background. You risk nothing. You should invest. And then I want a discount for everything that I am investing. Again, it's my business background. Now, the traditional way of trading is this, okay? They'll try and sell you the dream that if you write four times out of 10, you're gonna make money and you're a brilliant trader. I'll say if you're trading less than half the time wrong, so in other words, you're sort of wrong more than you're right, you're not trading, you're gambling and give it up. because there's a number of factors. Now, we're gonna put some decent figures in, so we'll leave it at a five pound bid, and we're gonna say you've got a stop of 60, and we'll leave it at the standard two to one, or you can just change that, and it'll go three to one, okay? Um, well, in fact, we'll leave it at three to one, just because that gets banded around a lot as well. Okay, now, with this, You've got to stop at 60, and I can go with 60, because a market ATR might be around that figure, and that'll guide your stop, okay? And there's nothing wrong with a wide stop. You're working in tight stops, you're gonna have death by a thousand cuts, and it's gonna be cut, 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 cut. And if you're working on the law of, well, if I lose more than I win, but when I win, I win big, will you pull the button? or press the button rather, after you've just had six, seven losses in a row, and then when it runs into profit, have you got the balls to hold on to it, or are you gonna snatch it? They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. So inevitably what happens is, you'll rack up the losers, and every time you have a winner, that winner, isn't strong enough to pay off the losers, so you never get anywhere. 
So that's why pretty much everything you know about trading is utter horse shit. Right? Think of it in business terms. Think of it in job terms. And when it comes down to how you apply yourself to the charts, think of it in money terms. I'm probably the only person who speaks like this. And for other people who do, they've probably met me or I've shown them how this works and they've had a light bulb moment and then I'll move on to good good things. Um, I, I've met some wonderful guys and I'm really pleased with how some of them are moving forward. In fact, dig out the conscious day trader. I speak to Yanis nearly every day, all right? He's a great kid. Look how well he's doing by seeing it in a different way, you know? Does he trade like me? There's very similarities to it. You know, do I trade like him? Very similarities to it. You know, because golding eye is the same sort of basis. You know, it's level to level and common sense. Check him out. He's a good kid. Anyway, from here, what I'm driving at is, one, every trade should be individual. Every one. Don't base it on another one because the markets are individual. You know, you can have 10 trades and they'll all be different. And that's where this system falls down. Because in order for a normal trader to go 100% of the market, and you either lose, win, and you're gonna win big or lose, they say, right, 40%. Well, every trade has to be equal. Same size, same stop, same target, same conditions. But they're not, it's a variable condition. So it don't work. And that's why you get spooked out and you get nowhere. But if we look at this, in order to break even, it says you have to win three out of 10. Is that right? I think that might be right on three to one. Uh, da, 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 four. Yeah, it's, um, cause if I lose, take it up to there. Yeah, three, three is the breakout, okay. So that's, that's your break even point. All right, sounds great, doesn't it? It's an easy sell. You shit at your job, but I'm gonna pay you anyway. Am I wrong? Anybody, and I mean anybody, would buy that. And if you see a clown that's selling a system saying, ah, oh, this is how it works, and your and you RR and all of this, I say it all the time and it winds me up. Um, they're selling you a false dream, guys. They genuinely are. Trading is not impossible if you apply common sense, but it is very difficult to apply common sense in a random market. And that's what these are going to get to. So anyway, sorry, rambling on. So there's the figures for a normal trader. And you've got to do that day in, day out. Your psychology will be battered senseless. But not only is it battered senseless, what if you get all of them in one go, right? How much damage does it do to your account? So that determines the position size because your account needs to be able to take a multitude of hits and still be able to fight the next day. But it doesn't, you know, if that wipes your account out, well, you're finished before you get here. Now, when you're making a small account, that is exaggerated even more so. So you've got to be a bit careful and use common sense. Put a certain amount of money on you're comfortable with. Number one question you ask yourself is, can I afford this trade? And I'll touch on that in just a second. Well, let's have a look at these maths. Now, I'm going to put the same criteria in. So we're going to leave it at a fiver. And we're going to put the target in at 180 and we're going to put the stop in at 60. Okay. And then we're going to play with these figures a little bit. All right. So if you're on five pound a point and you break it up into five chunks, I do, I, I like five. You can take it into 10 if you want, but five, five's fine. All right. So five splits. You put a pound in first. Your stop's the same, target's the same. So what you're doing is you're only investing 108 pounds and you're gonna get 372 back. 
okay, on these two positions. Um, but on the first position, you'll get three to one. On the second position, you will get four to one, making 3.4 return. If you chicken out, you still get 12 quid. All right, and I've got to put two in, because otherwise the, the engine doesn't work properly. <laughs> Sorry, but you assume it's going to step back on itself. Well, how far is it going to step back? Well, it's going to step back 12 pips, but its stop is naturally less because the stop doesn't move. It's in the same place. All right. If it moves against you again, so in this case, it's stepping back, your stop here is less. You've only got three quid on the table, but your targets are increasing. And because the targets are increasing, it means your return is increasing. So in this equation, right, you're investing less than half, but you're getting more than half the return. So money is not part of, well, I'm going to rephrase that. Money's what we're after, but in the first stage, it's process. First question you ask is, can I afford it? If you say yes, then you move into the process, and this is the process. I'm probably explaining it a bit badly, but bear with me. I'll, I'll, I'll start it again, just so you can kind of grasp it, okay? We understand this. It's 100% the market, and it'll blow your brains out. This side, same criteria, but you're going to stage in to the exact same stop. You do not change the stop. Every position has the same stop. So the first one will just be three. Let it move against you. In this case, it'll be 12 pips. You put another pound in, your return is four. The bonus is if you're chicken out, you're still getting 12 quid. Here, you get feck all. You know, it's all or nothing all the time. And we know you don't get it right all the time. That's why this doesn't work. This side makes money. Put a third position in as it moves against you. You've only got three quid on the table, which is a total investment of 144, less than half of this, but look at your profit. Your profit isn't half racking up and you get paid if you're chicken out and your rate of return is higher. If you go into four, and I'm gonna assume all five of these are gonna hit target, but if you go to four, look how much your investment is. It's tiny compared to this, but your profit is racking up pretty close to it. Rate of return is higher, and if you chicken out, you make money. And if it runs all the way to five and they all go, well, your investment is less, your profit is higher, your return is higher, and you've been in the same situation. Now I can dabble and play with these and if I chicken out I get paid I make money every day with how to manage it and that's what the squad's all about I show them how to manage a trade properly this is all or nothing it's gambling and you're going to lose in fact you're going to lose a lot of money because you can take this stop out to 100, right? So you've now got 100, so you've got a bigger stop, and you're investing exactly the same, allowing this to breathe, and that makes money. I can reduce the target to 150, and I still make money. In fact, I make more money than this, and that's the math behind it. Now, a lot of people don't get that, you know. They think nobody can have a hit rate like yours. Well, I haven't had a losing year for years. You know, I haven't had one for about seven years. Never lost a year. I haven't lost a month in over three years. A month, right? Because I do the same thing. And if you go through the videos, I trade the same. I don't jump and change to follow the narrative of the... The moment, you know, I don't. I've done the same thing day in, day out. And it's the same thing I was doing 15 years ago. So when people start talking about, oh, this is a new concept. My system's brand new.
There is nothing new in trading, guys. Nothing. There are constants and variables. The constant will be your support and resistance. You need a constant on the chart. You also need a hypothetical constant, which is a fib. They will give you a reaction point, and they will give you entry and exits. Then you have a variable, which is the price. Because the price will go up, it'll go down, it'll go nowhere. But if you know where the constants are, and you can work out what that variable is doing at a given time, is it going up? Well, you know where it's going to stall. So if that's the case, and it goes against you, and you've got a constant on the chart, you know where it's going to stall. So it makes common sense to be able to measure it out. And you can use the waves of the market to make money. And that's what I do every single day. And if you follow the channel, do subscribe. And if you're stuck, drop in the comments. I answer everyone personally. All my contact details are in the comments in the description. I'm an open book, you know. And if you're really stuck, I even set up a free telegram just for you guys to talk amongst yourselves. Because when you go into forums, sometimes it's just full of noise and blowhards, you know. It's very good to show massive figures. And I could show you some really big figures. But I think it's more important to focus on the small figures. That's why I do the challenges for you. I wasn't going to do any this year, but I'm doing it for Fred. So a little salute to you. And it's doing okay. You know, I purposely closed off some trades yesterday because I didn't want to run them through the weekend. In fact, I'll show you them. Uh, I'll show you the dashboard. Give us a second. If you can't take a little bloody nose, maybe you ought to go back home and crawl under your bed. There we go. Um, this is... I purposely shut at the end of last night 20 quid off, right? I, I took the punches and I did it on purpose. And I'll tell you for why. It's because I don't want to run it through the weekend. Because if it gaps, I haven't got a lot of room to play with. Let me show you and I'll explain it, okay? I've only got that to play with, this here, all right? And I've got to get it up to the milestone. Now, this is the first week. I should have only done about 20 quid this week, but I've done 46, so I'm well ahead of the game. I've taken 58 trades, 87% hit rate, and I'm still holding my profit factor. Why? Well, because that's what I do. I stage and I work, but look at this. What's the average position size? 0.01, 10p. 10p has made 46 quid in a week. Goes back to the whiteboard about being common sense. I work on a simple formula. 50p for every 500 is the quick ready reckoning maths. Well, I've only got four. And when I started, I had 360. So I can't do 50 pence. So I scaled it back into three openings of 30 pence. And it's paid me. Now, if I pull over onto the MT5 platform, I'll kind of explain what's going on here. Um, I've got nothing running. Uh, as you can see, it, I closed it all out for the weekend. And I, I'll, in fact, I might be able to show you the last three days, actually. Custom period. Uh, the last three days. There we are. All right. So you'll see, boom, 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 boom. Just little, little orders, knocking them out collectively. But I had to close them off, okay? Had to close them down. Now, which one of these are made up by 10p, 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 10p? You know, 20 pence. So I've got to be careful. And why have I got to be careful? Because look at the commissions. The commission's knacking me as well. So I've got to be careful on what I'm doing. Because if I put a big position here, that's a big commission. That's going to eat into the margin as well. So I've got to be careful about what I'm doing. Biggest size, 20 pence. Collectively, I lost 10 quid. Big deal. I closed it off. All right. Why? Well, let me explain. As we go into the weekend, we had a colossal run-up. Brilliant. But it's come into a solid level, which has a heavy zone that it's going to come into. Strong zone. Now, if I drop this down into the hourly, 
bang, 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 it's having a hard time. Chances are it's going to retrace back on itself before it smashes through this zone. Okay. Well, if it's going to smash through that zone, it needs some legs behind it. And to get some legs, it could come down to here, possibly even back down to here. So I would be in a massive negative and it's something I didn't want to do. So the common sense, going back to what we we're saying before, common sense was to sacrifice the tenor and be ready to fight on Monday morning. And that's trade management, guys. It's how to look after your account. And I'll do that day in, day out till it's passed. Then when it's passed, I get a bigger fund. It gets added to my other funds. And then as you see over the last couple of months, because we're only on 4th of March, so that's 21 grand in two months. You know, I don't think that's a bad wage considering I only want two or 300 a day. But obviously if I do more, it's money in the bank all the time, making life easier. I hope this helps. I genuinely do. Um, sometimes I get on one on a Saturday. I genuinely do. Um, but I genuinely want good people to move forward. Because there's a lot of good people out there that they might have an idea of what Forex trading is. And they can kind of see it. And they've, they've probably got the elements right. But they just can't put the nuts and bolts together. You know. And... That's where community comes into it. Sometimes they can help, but on some communities, they can actually cause more hassle than enough because all they talk about is, show me a strategy. I wanna see the strategy. Ah, oh, what's your strategy? Strategy has fuck all to do with it. You can get in on the flick of a coin and I'll still make money. I've proved it. If you know how to manage a trade, because when you press the button, You've only got an idea what it's going to do. You don't actually know what it's going to do. And that, that's kind of the way it works. So if you're stuck, easy found. If you want to come along to the Telegram, it's in the description. And do drop into the live screen tomorrow. Um, it's pretty much every Sunday. And there are replays. But if I go heavy into something, those replays are often just kept to the squad so it's great if you attend you'll get to see it and if it's not available that means it's in the squad taken out of the public arena that's all but inside the squad there's over 2,000 videos there now and it'll take you through every aspect of trading um, when it comes to trading do keep it simple you know simpler the better but if you're looking for the magic pill strategy wasting your time absolutely wasting your time simple is best and i'll tell you the simplest one in the world two fixed points of attraction a level above a level below and then the price if you've got a bollinger band it's an easy way to see it but if it's above the 20 you're buying it if it's below the 20 you're selling it look for a reason to enter and then you target one of those zones that's the watered version but that's what all i do every day I get into a trading arena, I see a reason to get in on a given direction and I stick to it and then I manage it to either a profit or a loss. And the, the trick is to reduce the loss as best you can and that's why you stage and maximise the profit the best you can. Again, why I stage. So there we go. A little bit of coffee with scruff. So as always guys, trade well. Keep your risk managed, but above all, do what you love and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.